we thank God for her, amen, stand to your feet as we honor this great woman of God, a pillar of the faith, amen, none other than Mother Rosa Logan, let's give her praise, let's give God praise for her as she come, come on, let's give God praise for the woman of God as she come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But the word, the words I want is love and sensitive, and they go together. And you know, the thing that um, I, I watch people and I watch things that go on around them very sensitive about everything. They call me nosy, but it's not really being nosy. It's because I want to see what's going on around me, how people act, how people respond. And you know, it's it's um you learn a whole lot just keeping quiet sometimes yeah. and observing. You yeah. learn more that way than just going out with your mouth, you know, because a lot of the things you say is useless and people don't really grasp it. But when you listen with your ears and that's what the teacher tell you all the school children, those that go to school, listen sometimes. It pays to listen sometimes. You learn a whole lot. Yeah. Whether somebody is saying something or not. People can just be standing there, but you're still looking because you're saying something in whatever they're doing, just standing there. And I thank and praise the Lord for being saved since I was 10. And I really stayed with the Lord, and it wasn't any business of mine. It was just the business of the Lord that kept me because I wanted to grow in the Lord, and I wanted to grow with the Lord like that and not like that. Not sometimes in and sometimes out, but like that. Because it's important that you have the Lord on your side. Mm -hmm. As a young person, it's a lot of evil out there now, way more than when I was growing up. And mm -hmm. I needed them way back there. I'm 73. Mm -hmm. And I sure enough needed the Lord back there. Mm -hmm. And you really, 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 really need yeah. it nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, things are just terrible, you know, and I really feel sorry for children. Yeah. Mostly that's growing up in the evil day and time of the day because everybody's out to hurt children. Everybody's out to destroy them. Even yes. the teachers don't teach them like they should teach them, you know. Yeah. And it's really sad. But the thing about growing up with the Lord, you store more in you than you realize, you know. And it comes up when you need it. Yes. And when you're hurting and when you're in pain, all that you've learned through the years, it will comfort mm -hmm. you. You know, when my mom died last month, the scripture that came to me, thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comfort you. Yeah. You know, and that meant more to me than anything because, you know, my mom didn't want to leave me. And I said, Mom, it's all right. Go ahead on. The Lord is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I said, my sister's name is Carl. I said, we're going to be fine, you know. She looked up at me like, are you sure? I said, yeah, man. Go ahead on. Go ahead. The Lord wants you. So we Hallelujah. prayed that night, the next day she left us, you know. Lord so Jesus. people keep saying, you know, or you say it, or, you know. They look at me like they keep looking for me to break down, and I kind of like did the other Sunday. But the thing is, I asked the Lord to take my mom. So why am I going to be sad now? He took her out of her misery, yeah, and he gave her right. peace, and he gave her a glorious body. Yeah. So what's there to be all sad about, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, of course I'm going to have my sad times, you know, Amen. because my mom and I were like that. Amen. My mom, I mean, she had her way, and she was firm, and she was stern, but yeah. it's something you learn to grow with, and it was, we just had a good time growing up, you know. She taught me, and she punished me, and she, she got me a lot of times, <laughs> but um, that was my mom, and I respected her, and I obeyed her because I knew that she was right, you know. And I thank the Lord because the Lord has been good to me. I don't know why he loves me. I don't even care as long as he loves me. Amen. You know, yeah. I know yeah. he's there for me and what he does for me is just fine with me. The road that he got for me, you know, he leads me and guides me and it's rough sometimes and tough sometimes. But hey, he's there with me. Yeah. You know, he yeah. never yeah. leaves me. So why should I be so miserable, Lord? Why did you let this happen? Why did you send me that? He did because he got my back. And he knows what's good for me. Amen. And, you know, and he's going to take care of me. And he's right there with me. So I know that he's there. And that's all I need to know. And then the thing, too, um, the song is, if, um, if it wasn't for the Lord, what would I do? Where would I be? You know, you got to think about that. 
you know, just think about that sometime. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be today? Because he didn't have to let us be here today. Like the car that almost swayed us, we could have been out there on the highway now, dead, you know, covered up with sheets. But the Lord blessed us so, there wasn't anything on the side, there wasn't nothing behind us. And he, he, won't you get me? He quit us. I call her name different, y'all do. Um, she was able to be in control of the car. So we thank God for that. Um, my scripture is one of them. It's coming from Romans 13 and 8. And we're talking about love. Now, love, when we get saved, God, we say he put his spirit in us. God's spirit is love. Amen. And there's no way you can love people anybody, husband or wife, children, anybody, without having God's spirit in you. You just can't do it. My husband and I have been married 55 years. And there's no way you can love anybody if you don't have God in your life. That's why so many divorces and fightings and fusses and all that. Because if you don't have God in your life, you just can't do it. It's two different people Hallelujah. with two different ideas and things, you know. You have to compromise. You have to talk, and you have to hear each other. That's my other word is being sensitive, okay? But the Spirit of God is love, and it flows through you just like your blood because God comes as love. Now, how are you going to have God, as you were talking about, if I get my message, how are you going to have God's Spirit in you and you don't have love, and you can't work with this and so-and-so and sister so-and-so because, you know, we just don't get along. How you gonna do that? And as a brother say, how you gonna love God? You ain't never seen him, you don't know what he's like. Amen. You don't know how he's gonna treat you or nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can't love each other. You can't love your sister or your brother. You can't even help him. You can't even, you know, look at him. You know, I just can't stand him, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you know he's got oh, problems yeah. and you can't help him no kind of way. You know, you can't talk to him, you know. I just talked to his brother a minute ago. I got all in his business because I felt like, you know, there's something that I can tell him, you know. And that's when, when we come in the door and see each other. The word sensitive, we should be sensitive enough to feel that she's not feeling good, that he's not feeling good. We should see that. And we should pray. I mean, you don't have to go and say, Sister, how you feel today? You don't look like you feel. You don't even have to say that. You know, just pray for them because they're not smiling like they usually do. They're not talking like they usually do. And, you know, uh, we need to be more sensitive and knock our antennas up to pick that up from one another. And, it's, and since it's Men's Day, let me say this, men have to be more sensitive to the wives. I know my husband, I mean, my husband had his faults. I can say he don't because I got mine too. But the thing is about men, they don't really hear us women all the time. You know, my husband get in that TV when he sees something he really likes. He don't look at TV much. But he will, uh, wake up, brother. I don't have no sleepy. No, I do like, uh, who's that? Uh, when um, Elder's on TV, have you staying up? <laughs> but... Uh, I would tell him something. I would call him. He never hear him. I call him again a little bit later. By the time I get that pitch, you know, that women get that men don't like. <laughs> Why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. I've called you three times. You didn't hear me. Because men are not sensitive enough to hear you the first time. You know, they say I talk too soft. Well, maybe I do, but I don't like yell. I don't like disputes, really. I don't like fussing and all of that. But I do want you to hear me. And a men just not that sensitive enough to feel that women need a hug sometime, that they need a soft word sometime, a kind word, or bring a flower sometime, you know, or maybe even cook dinner. If you can cook, my husband couldn't cook, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but sometimes we just need to go out our way to help each other, you know. And if you speak to one another and you see one another um, tired, Maybe got a little attitude from the day's work or whatever. Give that person a space. Why keep pulling at him, nagging at him, talking to him, and all you're going to do is get your feelings hurt? Because you just need to feel that that person needs a little space to calm down. And you can feel it. You can see it. And I'm not just talking to men right now. I'm talking to 
everybody because everybody needs to be sensitive enough to feel when yeah. they, when somebody needs okay. space. It's, and children need their space sometimes. Sometimes we own children back so much. And I used to be on Victor's back all the time <laughs> because Victor would do little things. I said, Victor, I say, I don't want to be on you all the time. I'm trying to give you a little leeway. Wake up, brother. But uh, I say, because I, I don't want to turn you against me. And I said, I ain't going to fuss at the thing. I ain't going to fuss at Victor today. You know, I'm going to try to find a good thing. And Victor would do something just, I say, Lord have mercy. How many through the whole day? But that's the way children are. And we have to be uh, sensitive enough to realize that's your child. Anybody can describe Victor. I can kind of like pick out they're talking about Victor. That's the way Victor is. He's a loving, kind person, but he's got little things that's a little bit different from other people, right, Vendel? Yeah, Vendel yeah. knows us real well. Their whole family have been to my house. The girls got up and cooked. I'm looking at them. Hey, they cooking breakfast. They cook sausage and pancakes. Wow. We just had a bowl, you know. They do that. They just feel free at my house, and they know they can do that. I, I mean, they didn't make a mess. They respected me, and they honored me. And I do that with them. We, I respect children, teenagers. I don't care. You know, I try to find a way to get along with them because that's the only way you're going to be able to deal with them is to find a way to get along with them. Now, that don't mean that you got to go along with their little cliques and all that, but you try to take their way of doing things, mix it with your way of doing something, and you'll come up with something wonderful. You really will. They will learn from you, and you'll learn from them if you do it right. But if you're going to pick at them all the time and nag at them all the time and that ain't the way I do it and you should do it this way, then you're going to lose your child and nobody's getting anywhere. I get along with my grannies, great grannies, you know, my children, and I love being around my children. My grandchildren, I hear people say they don't want to be bothered with them after they get grown. You know, what kind of way is that to feel? That's your child. You know, you got to find a way to keep on loving them. I just love for mine to come around. And if they don't come around and call me, say, y'all, come on, see me sometime, you know? Because I just love, young people are smart. And they got great ideas. And I taught in special ed. And, you know, those kids had problems. And then I taught in GED. Kids way bigger than I am. But um, they were smart kids. And... They said, Miss Logan, how in the world you teach with those bad kids? How you get them? I said, the kids are not bad. They're looking for love. Yeah. They're looking for somebody to want to be around them. Amen. They smart. Just give them a chance. They would see me in the mall. Miss Logan, hi. Okay, hi now. Which one is that? They would get me on each side. <laughs> Have me pulling me down through the mall because they were so glad to see me. And they, the people would go there in the mall and they'd be looking at me like, good Lord. You know, I guess they thought the kids were kidnapping me, really. <laughs> but I enjoyed it because I knew they were glad to see me and they loved me, you know. And when I see them, and they know I don't see well. They wave, Miss Logan. And I, you know, wave back at them. Sometimes I don't even know who I'm waving at. But you got to be there for people. you got to be friendly, you know, because that's the only way. And uh, the scripture is, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now, that's not really talking about the law of the Old Testament. That's talking about any law because if you love one another, that's what God required us. He required us to love one another. And if then the other scripture, wherever it's at that I got here somewhere, let me find my piece of paper. The other scripture I have is that um, 1 John 4, 7, and 8. I think that's right. Okay. Give me a minute here. I had a piece of paper there. It is. I see it right there. I'm getting there. Where is that piece of paper? I can see it right there. There we go. 1 John Four, seven, and eight. All right, here it goes. Beloved, let us love one another. 
But love is of God. For everyone that loveth is born of God, and God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now, how are you going to say that you are saved and have the Spirit of God? And it's a package. The Spirit of God comes with love. It's, it's just automatic. If you get saved, then that Spirit comes right there when you ask God in your life. Amen. And you got it flowing through you. Amen. And you know, how are you going to not love people? How are you not going to love, especially the people, the household of faith? Amen. How are you going to not love people, one another, each other, you know, everybody? You know, just speak and smile. You don't have to know them. Just wave and smile. Sometimes that, I'm going to tell you about a smile. You ever seen a Ben Gay commercial with the vibes, the heat vibes coming up? Mm -hmm. That's what a smile does. It's, it's heat flowing from you, bringing this to the next person. And sometimes I've had people to stop me on the street and speak to me and talk. I'm thinking like, uh oh, I shouldn't have smiled so heavily at that one because I ain't going to be able to get away here. <laughs> but uh, people are lonely and people want somebody to talk to. And people love somebody that takes time with them. So I smiled at this person once. And we stayed on that, right there on that sidewalk for about five or ten minutes because that person really wanted somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And then there's another scripture. I couldn't find it right then. I had it on my notes. But it's, it's the, it says something about love indeed. And indeed means to not just say it, not just talk about it, but show it sometimes. And when I say the husband bring the wife flowers sometimes, out of the blue, no birthday, no anniversary, nothing. You know, I just bought you some flowers today. Or I just wanted you to maybe go out and maybe for a minute by yourself and keep the chill. My um, um, granddaughter's husband let her go different places a lot of times, and he babysits. You know, and I think that's a good thing that men will do that because I know when I was raised, my, my husband was going so much. I didn't have anybody really to help me with the children, so I had to be there 24-7 with them, which was the Lord blessed me and gave me strength. I enjoyed it to a point because I was able to teach my children what I wanted them to know, how to wash their hands, how to use the bathroom, how to do this, that. Kids today wish they had a mom to do that yeah. because moms and dads have to work today. We weren't rich, the reason I stayed home. We couldn't afford a babysitter. So the best thing for me to do was stay home, raise my kids. I babysit every now and then and took on all the jobs, but it was a blessing in the long run. And when I was doing it, I didn't see it all together a blessing. But after they got grown and I was able to leave the house, I could see the blessing in it because the children were more at peace and they were more happier. Amen. But the thing is, I, I, I want to say too, you need, uh, when I would go to rehearsal and stuff like that, my husband wasn't the best babysitter. I would come back, the kids would be asleep on the floor or wherever, and I had to get them up and put them in the bed. You know, men are like that. It wasn't just my husband. I'm not putting him down. <laughs> but I say, well, if I got to do all this when I come back, I'll just stay home. It was easier on me to stay home than to have to come home and do all that and get all upset and uptight and ready to fuss. So, you know, you got to weigh each other out. Now, I knew my husband wasn't the best babysitter, so it was best for me to stay home. A lot of men can do that, and, you know, and they do a good job. And thank God if you got one like that. But I'm going to tell you, today's people, they look for 100% in a marriage, mm -hmm. and it ain't no 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you do good if you get 50% sometimes. Now, sometimes the husband might be 80 and the wife 20. And sometimes the wife will be 80 and the husband 20. You got to realize and try to balance that thing out. Wake up, brother. Because it, um, it, you need balance in your life. You need to be sensitive to one another. And when your husband is kind of like down in the dumps or whatever, that may be his 20%. Leave him alone, you know. Maybe tomorrow he'll come back energetic and he'll be 80%. Because none of us are perfect. And we got to realize we're two imperfect people with God's help mm -hmm. trying to take care of our children, trying to raise our families together, trying to be civil to each other, 
You know, and, and, and people, you can't tell young people that. You can't get them to understand. They get married with, on the front burner, they keep it right here. If it don't work, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm getting up out of here. I ain't putting up with that. Mm -hmm. They don't never let it get halfway. They keep it right there. Yeah. Amen. And it's not something that you keep right there. You got to work on that marriage. And it, it might take 10, 15 years before you get to even know each other if you're raising children. You know, because getting to know each other is a hard thing. He's got his ways, the way his mom brought him up. My husband was brought up in a big family. They had a lot of house full of people all the time, right? I was brought up in a quiet house, just me and my mom and my stepfather. So I'm not used to all this noise and all these people. I'm still not too used to it. Because you got to clean up behind them. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. But when I had something at the house, I kind of planned it. It ain't all the time. But his was all the time. His people all the time. And they enjoyed it. They, the more the merry, if it's all on the floor, on the couch, in the bedrooms, wherever you can find a spot, that's where you sit. But I wasn't used to that. And you got to get used to all that. Plus, they eat different than I did. They cook different than we did. You know? And sometimes I would get the question, is he going to eat that? I say, I hope so. I've been thinking, I'm hoping so. If he don't, he's going to miss a meal because I don't know how to do it no different. <laughs> so, you know, you got to consider all that, men and women. Yeah, like my husband used to, he'd eat it, maybe force it down, but anyway, <laughs> that was all right as long as it disappeared <laughs> until I learned how to do it. I cook pretty good now, but it takes time. It takes time, men. It takes time, women. And you got to deal with it. And pray. That's why. That's why I say um, marry equally. It, 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 you know, and it just don't mean um, spiritually. It means everything that goes with it, physically, spiritually, naturally, everything. If you do it, uh, somebody in the church with you, you can pray over it. I used to lay hands on my husband, pray for him, because he didn't understand what I was trying to get over to him. So I wanted the Lord to show him or tell him. And it wasn't any need of me keep on telling him because he wasn't getting it. Amen. So that's why it's good to have the Lord in your life. Amen. You pray for each other. You don't have to do it every night and, you know, make him mad, you know. Wait till he goes to pray for each other. Right. You know, it works. God moves in mysterious ways. That's why I like serving the Lord because you don't know which way the Lord's going to move. That's why he's our leader and our guide. That's what his spirit is all about in us. He will lead you in the path of righteousness. And it seems like it's not the path of righteousness. It seems like it's a path of destruction because it gets kind of rough sometimes. But he's there with you, as I said before. And that's what being saved is all about. That's, that's, the, that's the good part to me. Because sometimes I get in the car and I say, okay, Lord, what are we going to do today? Which way are we going today? Because I want him to lead and guide me. You know, and, and one time I went over a street or two, and I'm thinking, like, why did I do that? I'm supposed to be going this way, and I'm going that way. And then to later on, I found out it was a bad accident the way I usually go. And the Lord had led me over, and I was so glad because he was watching over me. And see, the Lord goes in front of you and watch over you and make, it, make your rough path straight. When we thinking that the Lord's going to do it this way, he does it that way. And when it's all over, he lets you see. And you'll be thinking, like, gee, I'm glad the Lord did it because I ain't had no idea how to get out of this one. You know, I ain't had no idea how to do some things. And I was so glad when the Lord let me see. I, be th I was thanking the Lord one time because he did something that I was trying to solve. And he had done it. He was doing it from the beginning, and I'm at the end. I already solved it out my way, and then it didn't work my way. And I said, oh, thank you, God. I'm so glad you're in my life. If it had not been the Lord who was watching over you from day to day, you would be in a terrible fix. Yeah, you would. And, you know, and, and, and my cousin right there, I'm glad to see. Cause I didn't know nobody in my family was saved, really. I didn't know nobody was going to church. And then I found out my Aunt Dorothy, she's really a believer. She has faith, really. 
And then I found out he was going to church, and I found out another person was going to church. I forget who that was. And I said, well, thank you, Lord, because I really didn't know that um, people in my church and my family was concerned, you know. I know I have a lot of, and most families do, so I'm not putting my family in, but a lot, I had a lot of alcoholics, a lot of thieves, and a lot of bootleggers and stuff. You know, I knew all that, but I didn't know nobody was saved, you know. So I'm glad he came. That was one of us. He's going to come. But, you know, it's so good when you go from place to place and see people still saved. Yeah, hallelujah. People you've been knowing all along. Yeah. And uh, when we go to fellowship on the fifth Sunday and you see people, you thank in the Lord that they are still saved. You'd be surprised at people that are leaving church. And not only just leaving church, but just uprooting, going from place to place to place. Yeah. And they get all confused. Yeah, that's right. Because... That's right. You don't teach like I teach. You don't teach like I teach. And you need to stay in one spot and learn something. Maybe where you are, it's not quite up to par. But if you learn some word, then you can have the word in you to back you up if you do leave. But if you leave and don't have no word in you, you want to be just like a, a ship out on the ocean. Don't know which way to go, you know. So that's why the scripture says, study to show thyself approved. So you will know what you're talking about. You will know what God is saying. You will know when he speaks to you. You get to know each other better because his word will enlighten you. I was telling the quill that we, <laughs> that the 23rd Psalm, you can read it over and over. And as you grow spiritually, the Lord reveals it to you in different ways each time. Amen. He's not going to put all that in you when you just got saved. He lets you understand it to your level. And when you grow in the Lord a little bit more and you read it, you'll see a message in there. You'll be thinking, like, I didn't see that at first. You know, that's why it's important to study to show that our stuff approved. A workman need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You ain't going to be ashamed talking about the Lord if you didn't study and know what you're talking about. Amen. Now, I have taught Sunday school and didn't study. And I get up there <laughs> and I'm fumbling and, you know, I'm not sure of myself, you know, and I'm thinking, like, that's what you get for not studying the lesson. <laughs> but when you study, yeah. I had studied this word last night, and I, that's why I, I remember my script. No, I didn't. I take that back. That's why the Lord brought the scriptures back to me. I didn't do it on my own because I was wondering, where did that scripture have? And he brought it right back to me. But that's important to be that close to the Lord, that he bring things back to your memories. Amen. Because we forget, and, and then we get all caught up in ourselves, too. Yeah. So I say, well, Lord, if this message go far, did somebody get something out of it? It sure it was you, because it ain't nothing like what I said. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, the Lord do that, give you a different message than what yeah. you said, because you get so caught up in yourself. Okay. i tell you one thing, I'm going to sit down. I got caught up in myself one time singing in the choir. I was so sure of the song, and I just knew this song. And I was leading it. I got, to, I got ready to open my mouth. All the words went. I couldn't remember not one word. My mouth was dry as a bone. I couldn't even swallow. I mean, I was choking because I had gotten so caught up in myself. Instead of letting the Lord bring those words to me like I usually do, I'd be thinking, like, oh, please help me with the song, please help. I didn't do that. That's I just knew that song. So, you know, it pays to let the Lord lead. It pays to let his spirit that you say you have in you, let it lead and guide you. Let it help you. That's what it is, a helper. And Lord knows we need all the help we can get this day and time. Every little bit. And when people are helping me because I don't see good and I'm getting older, I sure appreciate it. Because, you know, every little bit is a big help. Because I'll stumble sometimes, you know, and sometimes forget, you know, and different things because age do that, you know. Mm-hmm. So you have to know what age you are, too, mm-hmm. men and women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always keep up with your age because you can't fool the body mm-hmm. and the mind. So you can act like you're 15 sometimes, mm-hmm. but the body will tell you that, hey, you about 50 or over, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and the mind will tell you when you can't remember which way to go home. You know, making a list and following that list. So always remember who you with Jesus Christ and what spirit you got in you that leads and guides you and helps you and being sensitive to that spirit. Sensitive to your own body. 
Because your body didn't tell you to stop eating all this food and be trying to lose weight and stop. Because mine would tell me sometimes I eat something and it would make me sick. Amen. You shouldn't have ate it. Amen. That's what my daughter always said. And she's a, she's a good spirit, too. Mm -hmm. Mine, you shouldn't have been stuffing it in your mouth. You know, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. She's right. What can I say? I can't discuss her. But she's telling the truth. So, you know, know yourself. Know mm -hmm. thine own self. Really? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to sit down. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invite you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Budenite Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church. Yeah.